Welcome back to this already, the final segment of The Price of Business. And i got a really incredibly special guest here on today's program, uh, Congressman Tom DeLay, uh, a friend of mine now for, for a couple of decades. You're, you're about to enter that sphere and I'm, you know, where uh, I don't want to say how long I know you because it only dates me. But uh, yeah. Congressman Tom DeLay, so delighted that you could uh, join us we, today. I think we met when you were a high school student. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I just looked like one. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. But uh, you are... You are uh, an extraordinary gentleman, extremely courageous, uh, passionate about freedom, yeah. and uh, your story to me is a story of uh, government gone awry, uh, the uh, excess of power, uh, the excess of abuse, and uh, people want to read all these narratives. They want to read what the media has to say, which has such a, an incredible agenda, uh, and it's so obvious and so clear, but people are, in my opinion, are too sleepy or lazy or lethargic to really dig a little deeper as to what in the world is going Going on, and so what I like to do is start, if you don't mind, kind of setting the stage of your story, if you will. Setting the stage, my story of your story, yeah. And, well, uh, and we only have minutes at ours, yeah. so uh, <laughs> so keeping that in mind. Well, basically, I came out of the private sector. I owned a pest, pest control business uh, back in the seventies, um, and every time I turned around, the government was interfering with my ability to raise my family and build my business. So I decided to get involved in it. Little did I know that I would end up. Uh, majority leader of the United States House of Representatives, and that's the story. Um, yeah. It's, um, um, I went to Congress in 85, uh, worked very hard to take over the majority in Congress for the first time in 60 years. In 1995, we took the majority, and we pretty much uh, uh, have uh, held that majority except for two years for ever since. Yeah, absolutely. And and the significance of that is it was decades. I think it was back uh, in the 30s since the last time uh, the House was Republican-dominated That's before right. 1994. That's exactly right. With and, one two-year period during the Eisenhower administration. And, and, yes, but basically, exactly right. 60 years of Democrat dominance of Congress. That's yeah. right. And so you were a part of that, uh, what they called the Re- Republican Revolution of uh, 94. There's a Republican Revolution of 80. You are a part of, uh, of the 94 one. Yeah. And uh, when did you get elected to the legislature before you ran for the U.S.? 1978, I ran yeah, for the Yeah, so you were even part of the 80 revolution as well. Yeah, so. I was a Ray- Reagan baby. There you go. That's right. <laughs> me too. Me too. I first vote, Ronald Reagan, my best vote. Yeah, I think it's uh, it probably made uh, Bush the, the maddest at me because I supported Reagan over Bush. There you go. And Bush being from Houston, and Texas. And that is hard to do from Texas. Forget right. about uh, just, you know Houston. And so, right. uh, But again, you've always been very courageous about where you stood. And I think that's what made you such a nuisance to, uh, <laughs> to the hard left and and uh, led to the, uh, what I think, you know, and by the way, Jim Ellis and I go back decades too, and yeah. I know Jim Ellis is a friend of yours, uh, but I think that's what led to the uh, the preposterous, and I say now, uh, especially when you look at how it's been adjudicated, um, trumped up charges that came against you. Well, that's what happens to the left. They've criminalized p- politics. If they can't beat you in the political arena, they'll try to destroy you, right. and, and they, that's a strategy of theirs. It's in their books. It's in Alinsky's book. It's uh, if you are against their ideology and if you win, and that was my biggest problem is we won. You we kept winning over and over <laughs> right. again. You're so irritating to the left, <laughs> my God. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited that, uh, why, why did you say briefly the charges and, and the fact well, that, act- and they had to go, they literally went shopping for a court to prosecute. Well, it. it's worse than that. <laughs> Actually, it started 17 years ago in 1995. They announced publicly that they were going to take Tom to lay down. Okay. Uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, uh, announced that they were going to take me out, and that was when I first got my I got my first uh, ethics charges, uh, more ethics charges in 2000, all frivolous and dismissed. I even had a racketeering suit filed against me by the Democrat Campaign Committee uh, in 2000. Two, more ethics charges in 2002, and then they found the r- rogue district attorney Ronnie Earl in Austin, Texas, to indict me on a law that doesn't exist in Texas. Yeah. Uh, and he shopped uh, multiple uh, grand juries. One grand jury even no billed me until he found a grand jury that was just sworn in 30 minutes to indict me on the day of the statute of limitations. Unbelievable. Out. And then uh, it took five years. They, they stretched it out five years to go to trial. It was a, it was a, a kangaroo court. Uh, awful Making judge. sure that cloud was always over you, making yeah. it impossible really for you to just keep 
just living. You well, know? basically, the Republicans had a rule in, in the House that if a leader was indicted, he had to step aside his leadership. And that's really all they wanted. But they, they accepted the icing on the cake to keep me out of politics. So five years going to trial, was convicted by a jury of left-wing wackos out of Austin, Texas. Uh, but then three years later, I, in my appeals, I was exonerated and acquitted. Yeah, fantastic story, and and but I, seventeen years, seventeen years, twelve million really, dollars in legal fees. I, w- I would call it, uh, I would call it persecution. Oh, I definitely, would call it seventeen political years perse- persecution. Two, deca- two decades. You don't think it happens in America? It happens. It happens all the time. This is why there's not as many courageous leaders on the right. To be honest with you, the left can do whatever they want. Because there's going to be no consequences to it. That's right. uh, but but someone takes stands like you and are so incredibly effective like you, watch out. And and so guys like you, I, I mean, well, that's part of the I get strategy. choked up, frankly, talking about your story. I talk to your story about others, and I hear, you know, conservatives, you know, Republicans who are good intended, but they won't read beyond the headlines or they'll read a couple of paragraphs and they paint with this broad brush. And I'm going, Tom Delay is a hero. Mm, I mean, no. Tom, no, 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 you are a hero. I mean, you've been fighting for liberty in a way most aren't willing to do and uh, have taken it on a chin in a way that most aren't uh, willing to do. And uh, you've paid in so many respects an incredible price. Well, we're, we're not, we haven't been stopped. No, I know. No, that's no, have why we I, not, uh, we're not intimidated. We're going forward in a much bigger way. I'm a better person for it. I, I, I give glory to God for getting me through it and giving me the strength uh, to get through it. Um, and uh, he and I are connected at the hip, and we're, we're going forward uh, in many big ways uh, for, to the future to try to provide that leadership that is so desperately needed in the conservative movement. So what does that look like? How does that leadership going forward from time to late look like? Well, first of all, we need to look at the conservative media, movement, and I have, and look at the voids in that movement, and I have, and hopefully can f- fill the voids. The left... Over the last uh, 15 years, with Obama's help, has put together the most powerful c- political coalition that I've ever witnessed in my it's life. It's incredible. It's a machine. And we have done nothing to counter that or, or to at least come to parity with that. And we need to rebuild the conservative movement's infrastructure so that we have the cap- capacity to fight at least on a level uh, playing field. With, with And then the second thing is we have to go on offense. We're constantly on defense. We're constantly reactionary. It's time for a revolution for the Constitution. Yeah. And we need constitutional revival in this country. We, and this huge uh, chasm between the left and the right has to be fought out with the American people, and I hope to be part of that. Okay, so does it include, I assume, grassroots efforts? Uh, oh, what, definitely. Yeah, grassroots efforts. Uh, but what other areas do well, you see tactically you being involved as well as strategically? Well, it may not go with your program, but first and foremost, we have to return to being a moral country. Absolutely. We have lost our morality in this Free market country. economics is built on morality. Exactly right. You can't, you can't have free market e- economics unless you have a moral people. Yeah. You cannot have our Constitution way of life unless we have a moral people. And we have pushed God out of out of our morality and out of our public sphere, and we need to put God back in into that so that we have a moral people. We also need to educate our our people, and, and so that they have the knowledge of who we are, what is the Constitution, and the philosophy and ideology of the Constitution. It's basically all men are created equal. Yeah. And and therefore, you have the opportunity to be whatever you can be as long as you work hard to be it without the interference of government. That's contrary to the left who wants to create this utopia and that you get your rights from the government and the government, uh, your rights, the government gives you those rights and and gives you uh, opportunity comes from the government. Those are two divergent views that needs to be fought out in the political sphere. Yeah, on um, many different levels. On many different levels. Tom yeah. DeLay, he's a former congressman, uh, former majority leader, one of the most influential uh, Americans uh, of our time and a great uh, fighter for liberty and has been and continues to be. And I'm so delighted uh, to have him on my program. Uh, literally uh, goosebumps at, at moments uh, no. just to see you, man. I'm very proud of you and very happy for you and very glad that you were willing to spend some time with me. Well, thank you. I hope, I hope to come back. Oh, plan on the that. The fight is big and we need all the help we can get. Plan on that. Can I get a website from you? 
And I don't have one right no, now. No, no website yet. But mm-hmm. if you look up Tom DeLay there on Facebook, you're all over Facebook. Yeah, and I, and have I have any, a fan page. You have a fan page there. If you go to usdailyreview.com, we'll have information about this uh, interview, also priceofbusiness.com, with links over to that uh, Facebook page. Yeah. Congressman, thanks so much. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Uh, great program today. Loved uh, being with you. Look forward to being with you here tomorrow on the next Price of Business. <laughs>